for YouTube. We're gonna play a bunch of decks today. This is one that I have been playing for quite a bit. Um, and this, this one right here, is also the, that I've uh, been really impressed with. Just this mono red deck, I think, is really good. Um, this is kind of like a little updated version that I've been playing around with and thinking with. Um, well, I decided to, I've been losing, I've been beating, winning a lot of this deck, but I've been losing to, when I lose, it's to very specific things. Like, I lose to X4s out of green decks, and I lose to Lyra Dawnbringer out of white decks, and then um, just running out of gas against control decks because Seal of Ways can deal with, um, Seal of Ways deal with, like, Hazret and such. There's just more answers to them. So I decided to change a couple things up. I cut a couple of Rekindling Phoenixes, because I don't think they're quite as good as they used to be. Added some Chandras to the main deck to help with to help fight X4s and control decks. And then got some on crop crashers just to be able to force through damage and make it so Lyra can't block. As a sideboard to kind of address a little bit more of the Lyra issue, I've got the puncturing blow. Because unless you can combine like Soul Scar Mage and multiple burn effects, then like, you just don't have a very good answer to that card. Um, just some more answers to X4s here. That's all these are. Being able to steal the big green creatures. Um, and then more grindy aspects against control decks. But we're going to jump back into it and start our day off with a little bit of magic. This is super laggy. Super duper laggy this morning. So let's jump in here. Oh, we already got pair. That's sweet. I would like to play first. I would like to mulligan. Need more lands. Yeah, this is a good hand. I've been really, really impressed with this chain whirler. This chain whirler is like aces. Um, I want to put this on top. We would like to just hit our land drops and being able to like make sure we get land three, and then if we draw no land cast anything in our deck is really important. Especially when we have Chandra's in the main deck. Just curving out is important. We're not going to have a good turn two play. It looks like we're going to be playing against the control deck, so hopefully we can find one of our um, one of our Chandra's. Finding a Chandra is going to be pretty important. If this is like just a control deck, I think I'm just going to send a Lightning Strike upstairs. We have a Braid to deal with like um, a Scare of God or something like that. And I think it's going to be, I want to empty my hand out here so that we, um, no, a Braid to deal with like a Gunsea Siphoner, excuse me. I'm going to play this Crasher because there's a chance that the uh, Chain Whirler actually kills something. But I guess I play in a moment of craving. Yeah. There's not a lot of moment of cravings running around the format right now. There's a lot of cast downs. We're definitely going to need to draw a heavy hitter in order to win this one here. History finale. This card's been really important. Or really, really impactful in what I've seen. Hey, Dylan. Yeah, I might do that. I mean, but I also just don't want to change too much there. I kind of just got it from the, the 5-0 list. There's not a lot of method behind the madness, you know? And I guess I'm going to play this Bowman Courier so that I can, like, empty my hand next turn and cycle it. This card has been, like, really impressive. I think this card's, like, absolutely aces out of the sideboard of control decks. 
All right, smokes my chain whirler. It's so nice that it attacks and blocks. We're in a lot of trouble here. So I think we're just gonna abrade. Kill one of these. I don't wanna take a million damage next turn from these, this history. Then we're just gonna cycle this Bowmat Courier. Draw a card. All right, he's got, got it anyways, okay. It's kind of like cycling. I mean, we trade for a card, but we're definitely running on empty here. We need like a Hazaret or a Rekindling Phoenix off the top. Is my mic scratchy? I don't, I'm not super sure. I don't think it is. Keep hearing static. Maybe it's not plugged in all the way. I don't know, we'll give it a second. The only reason there were no well do you do you know that? For like cause I cause I that guy is on like the He's on like the first strike podcast and he was talking about his deck. I, I didn't remember him saying that. I didn't listen to the podcast like super, super well. All right. This card has been really great. Like it just helps so much with all these big decks. All right. We're both kind of running out of empty here. Like, my opponent's got a lot of really good top decks. You know, Scare of God probably ends the game on the spot. Torrential Gear Hulk probably ends the game on the spot. Yeah, it was. Okay, that card's pretty bad. So it tends me to think that they're more of a mid-range deck. At least they only have one energy. So I'm gonna target this because if they wanna trade with, uh, we wanna trade this Siphoner and that's fine. This lets me attack with both. Though, should I be attacking or should I threaten to trade with the Siphoner? I think I'm gonna threaten a Siphoner trade. And I think this card is like better in the graveyard anyway, but the back half of it's much more impactful. If he just kills this, then he just kills it. But yeah, I just took misplaced Ginger's deck. It's a glimmer. Let's cast that out. All right. Well, that was gonna be bad for us either way. We missed out on I guess a point of damage. Now I really need like a Chandra. Chandra would be really good. Hazret would be really good. Just something here. Uh, I think I'm just gonna threaten the trade again. I just wanna get this Siphoner off the battlefield. I mean, I don't think we're winning this game. I don't think we're winning this game really by like attacking either. We're gonna draw two cards here. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna scoop it up here. I don't think we're getting out of this. A lot of cast outs. I'm pretty excited to play the mono green deck because I've seen a lot of enchantment removal and I think like Thrashing Brontanon is really good right now. So we're gonna bring in the Glory Bringers, gonna bring in the Chandras, wanna bring in my land, and then I wanna find room for this Puncturing Blow because I'm sure that they're like, they're going to have Dawnbringer after sideboard. Cards that I'm not, I'm not super interested in shock. It does efficiently deal with Glinsteve Siphoner, but that's probably it. Um, I don't really like any of the, 
I don't really like any of the removal, considering we're boarding in some removal and have Chandra's and have Chain Whirler for the little, um, like the creatures. I like more removal on the draw, I think. I could see having a Braids because they easily could have a card like Aether Sphere Harvester. <clears throat> like, we still have, like, for cards that specifically deal with Siphoner, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cards I could see bringing in any number of these. Maybe the Kari Zev is a little too cute. Like, it does block History of Benalia for days, but, like, if we're worried about blocking, I don't think that's that important. I'm going to bring in another Braid. A lot of fours. A lot of fours. But we, we know that they most likely have Scarab God in their deck, and then they most likely have Dawnbringer in their deck, so we'll give this a whirl. Would like to play first. Yeah, this hand's pretty good. We got early pressure and an answer to Glinsley Siphoner. I love me a Bomac Courier. This card's just awesome. It just like, it gives down early. It's a 1-1 one, one that like, Really feels bad killing, but you have to kill. <sighs> Coffee's almost done. Or I'm going to need more coffee in a second. So now we're just going to curve out. They're probably just going to kill this, it looks like. Fatal push. Yep. All right, there's a land. We can play Chandra on four. I'm going to be pretty hyped up about it. If my opponent plays a Glinsleaf Siphoner and doesn't have a way to make two energy, I think I'm just going to jam another Kenra and hope that I can smoke the Glinsleaf Siphoner with the Chandra. So I'd like to guarantee get a card out of this. Okay, it didn't happen. All right, we're going to save that. I would like to be able to do something with it. Even if it's just like, I can see his deck easily having like Champion of Wits. Like I'm assuming his deck's like a little similar to maybe the blue-black mid-range deck, but instead of playing like the double black cards, it switches over to white. I bet it still plays like, um, I bet it still plays cards like, uh, Champion of Wits, um, Glinsley Cypher. We saw the Glinsley Cypher, but it not plays like Scarab God and stuff. So hopefully this is just a siphoner. No plays from our opponent. All right, I think I'm just gonna play the Chain Whirler. I really don't want to jam this Chandra into, I don't wanna jam this Chandra into a position where I can't really use it. Like it's just gonna be a four mana shock. So I'm just gonna play my land, play the Chain Whirler after combat. Alternatively, if I just jam the Chandra they don't have an answer to it, I can plus it and get the Kenra back next turn. They just have showed me so many answers for the Chandra that I'm just a bit nervous just jamming it. But it's gonna, like if I draw something good next turn, they're gonna have to answer this, which means that's gonna resolve. I guess I'm just gonna be mana efficient. Like if I draw another land next turn, I can go bing bing, or I can plus and bring back the Kenra. Oh, it sucks we missed a puncher and blow. It's going to feel pretty bad if they have just like a one for one answer for this, which they're tapping mana, so they probably do, yeah. Maybe that was a mistake. We do have four of them, so, you know, you can be a little bit liberal with it. We're getting to the point of the game where like all of our draws are good because like lands are good to get us to Kenra. Um. 
spells are great because you know we're, our opponent's just trading one for one with us, and they have a land that has they have a deck that's probably got. Well, they I guess their cards get more impactful later in the game. All right, we're gonna go to attacks first. Then we're gonna jam the Chandra. Uh, that's that's unfortunate, but you can't just like plus it for mana. There, you gotta just, just get your damage in while you get your damage in. I think I'm really nervous that we're gonna get Dawnbringer next turn. If we're gonna get Dawnbringer, then I think I'm just gonna swing in with the Goblin dude and take my two for one and give him five life. Oh, give me one second. Okay, so no plays from our opponent means they just have a bunch of spells. So Bowmat Courier is not a terrible draw. We could get Settle the Wreckage, but if we get Settle the Wreckage, we'll just sack the Bowmat Courier. And we'll get our land for our Kenras. I mean, they might settle with this. They should settle with this on the stack, if that's what they're going to do. Okay, chirp. We'll let them both go. Get our two mountains and pass the turn. Gotta look for an email here, so give me a second. Okay. So get rid of this. Make it so this can't block next turn. Sorry, sorry I'm paying attention to this, just looking for this email. So we're gonna get in here. This can't block. Found, found the email. All right, thank you, Exhale. I appreciate the follow. There, I will, I'll, I'll be multitasking. I am off work today, but I had a work thing come through. Okay. So you're gonna need 
I guess Torrential Gear Hulk would be a good draw for them. All right, nice. So I think I want a little bit more removal on the draw because I just don't want to get like, I really don't want to be naked to a Glinsley Siphoner. I probably can board out like a Soul Scar Mage for just one more braid, have four braids on the draw. I want to keep the Crasher so that I can push through a Dawnbringer if I need to. Yeah, we'll give this a whirl. Soul Scar Mage is one of our best answers. So maybe, I feel like I've got to cut one of these. Because I, I just want a one more removal spell. Or maybe a Chain Whirler. <coughs> I think I'm going to cut a Chain Whirler. Because this, this comes back in the late game. The Chain Whirler is like, they're not like a dedicated token deck. They don't have, a, they have like, they have a decent amount of X1s, but not like too, too many. So I think I'm just going to cut a Chain Whirler. Yeah, go like this. Get one more braid in there on the draw. Be just a tad more defensive. This is a hand that like, if we draw lands, we're in good shape, but we have to draw lands. And I think we can just do better on six. All right, this hand's like not very much better, but I think I'm gonna keep it. We have an answer. We don't need another glory bringer though. We have an answer to a siphon on two, which is kind of like the first checkbox I feel like. We drew the land, which isn't great, but at least it's gonna get us to glory to glory B. Okay. All right. I mean, we've got like, we've got all the scary stuff covered. Like this kills Dawnbringer and Scarab God. I'm not gonna kill this probably. Because I can draw like a Chain Whirler and get this card. All right. Let's go to the home team. Okay. So they found the land. Yeah. We're just gonna leave this here. I don't think there's any reason to kill it. And like, it makes our hazards a little worse, but more than likely the first hazard isn't going to do anything anyways. Yeah, see. Chain, chain, chain. The card is so good. Just undoes our mulligan. I one time killed two creatures in a planeswalker with this card, and I was just like, oh my god. Unreal. This card's so good. All right, we're gonna get this push, so we get our clean twofer, and they're out of energy. We really wanna draw a spell next turn, so that we're not just mono-reactive. History of Benalia, okay. This card's pretty annoying. Soul Scar Mage is Dece. I think we're gonna abrade. Well, no, I can take two from this. Or I could just like deal with it and then have Glory B come down and deal with the other one, then the history doesn't do anything. I think I'm gonna do that. We've got like a Glint Sleep Siphoner covered. Actually, now I can hit the other one and block it. Yeah, they saw that play. So, if I hit this right now, he doesn't gain any life. So, we'll do that. Soul Scar Mage with some cool interactions. And I think on a mulligan, I'm okay if they flash this back, discarding a card. I gained two life? I thought I gave it minus one, minus one counters. Gain life equal to its power. That's not how that works, right? Am I crazy?
Okay, opponent missed a land drop. So this first glory bringer is likely not gonna live past my untap. So I'm just gonna get the value out of it, smoke one of these knights. Just turn it into a card. Or at least kind of a card. I like this Benalia, history of Benalia a lot. Ouch, take four. So I can play Bomi and Chain Whirler. Set up a pretty good attack next turn, but that's the turn they might settle me. Alternatively, I could chain. I think we're gonna play the board and then just try to play around settle a little bit next turn. Like I just might not attack with like my Bomat Courier next turn, just come in with the Glory Bringer. Oh, we can actually attack with this one now because this is a combo. Now we can exert on a. Um, we can exert on like a Dawnbringer. Yeah, so I think we're about to get settled the wreckage here. So maybe I just leave my glory bringer and attack with maybe just these two. Or I can just attack with the chain whirler. I could also just activate my scavenger grounds too. I think I'm just gonna attack with the chain whirler. And the soul scar mage. Make them settle me. Keep my card, like this card's doing a lot of good work for me at the moment. And then I think I'm just gonna scavenger grounds. Yeah, see we're getting settled. Okay. I tackle the Soul Scar Mage there just because we have the uh because we have the puncturing blow for the Dawnbringer or anything scary. So we're gonna do this right now. We don't have any Kenras in our graveyard, so it's pretty minimal cost. But hopefully they just slam the Dawnbringer. Now I think I'm just gonna attack with the Glory Bringer. I don't wanna trade these, or I guess I wouldn't trade, but I don't wanna like get whacked by another Settle the Wreckage for two creatures. If they wanna settle this, then we can set something up where we just start working a Bomat Courier. Looks like they've got another Settle. I'm gonna be kinda of punished if this is like a Cast them. Okay, so they're out of black mana, which is good. And now we're just kind of in a holding pattern. So now we're definitely coming in with this courier. Hopefully, we draw Chandra. Rekindling Phoenix is pretty good, also. I should have played the. Nah, because they're going to kill this with the trigger on the stack, anyways. And we're just going to let it die. This could get countered, but the, but jamming this into a Glimmer turn is also good. And the nice thing about the Abrade is the Abrade can protect the Rekindling Phoenix. Like I, am, I can feel free to attack with it. 
Slam a Dawnbringer. Slam a Dawnbringer. We got it covered. Tilt. Slam a Dawnbringer. I kind of want to save this glory bringer. Is that crazy? So they've already played a settle the wreckage. I kind of want to save this glory bringer until I can smoke something. I don't think I think this game's gonna last for a while. Get this thing back. And then we're going to let our Bowman Courier go. So do I jam do I jam the glory bringer after combat? He's playing fumigate, it's bad. I have nine mana and I have eight lands. Yeah, let's just... Because, like, this could be a fatal push. If he pushes this token, then I don't have anything on the board. If he if he has... If he's playing Settle and Fumigate, then, like, good on him. Yeah. So that's good. Because now, now we have a board presence. Or it's going to take him another removal spell to deal with this. Slam a Dawnbringer. Yeah, slam your big white angel. Damn it. Alright, Chandra off the top. Chandra off the top. Tilt. Tilt. Now we're in trouble. Come on, play your Chandra. Or play your play your Dombringer. Don't play a Gear Hulk. Scarab God be he. Hopefully they just don't have five, two big scary five drops. That's a pretty good draw. This at least means that I get two attacks in. All right, you, you can get out of here. Trolls. So they still only have one piece of black mana. God, don't be another scarab god, like have a heart. That's not good. All right, so we're now we're just gonna now we just gotta attack. I think, like, I gotta attack, give him the option to block, and then reset it and hope to peel again. I think. Because the Scarab gets back Glorybringer, which kills this anyways, if we exert through it. So, there's no real point to, they might as well like at least make them like spend five more mana. There it is. So neither a has it now. Well, Glorybringer is actually not bad because I can attack and then exert 
on. They have to get back their own My Glory Bringer. So if we draw a way to kill Glory Bringer, then we're, we're kind of in good shape. And like if they bring back Rekindling Phoenix, then that doesn't do anything. So there's coming in. They put a land. That's savage. I think we just gotta attack. They bring back Glory Bringer. One, two, three, four. At least I can't double bring it back. They could bring back Reclaiming Phoenix and block now, so maybe I wasn't supposed to do that. And then they get Glory Bringer back next turn, they kill me. Yep. But I was dead to that either way, because even if I don't attack, they just bring this back and then they Glory Bringer and I block. Dead. I guess I could have gone to one. Oh, the Puncturing Blow was right there. That's so sad. That's a tough way to start the league. Start the stream today, but what are you going to do? Drew one too many of braids, I think. Uh, this hand's good. Hopefully we're playing, if we're playing a match with these chain whirlers are really good. Like if we're playing against like mono white or something like that, we should be in pretty good shape here. I'm going to let viewers this morning. I appreciate y'all for hanging out. Let me get some coffee while my opponent takes their turn. Playing against. Okay, so this is great. Okay, so our chain whirlers should be very good. Now I think we're gonna play Soulscar Mage. I, I did this in reverse order. Cause the Soulscar Mage kind of invalidates this Dauntless Bounty Guard. So like, I don't have to get it off the table to have my Whirlers do anything. The Chain Whirlers should be very, very good. Now, especially now that we have this Soulscar Mage in play. See the way they deal with one of them, that's okay. Seal away is something that definitely makes it a little bit harder on these red decks. Hopefully they commit to the board more. That's what we're looking for. Alright, that card's pretty good. We're going to be able to deal with it though. Can attack with both creatures because this gets a minus one minus one counter and then next turn we can follow it up with another one yeah, i don't think decks like this are very good because of chain whirler unless you're playing like a million anthems chain whirler is just like because this card's at least going to be a two for one i find that to be odd unless they're and if they sram's expertise here then it's going to get even worse for them Because that's a good way for them to catch up, theoretically, but we have another Chain Whirler. 
Very odd block. I guess they're like, I'm not going to win this game making 1-1 one, one colorless servo tokens. tokens. Air ground warden. Okay. So I think I'm just going to play out another Chain Whirler, get a token on this, and then attack with both of my creatures and pass, and wait to kill this Fairgrounds Warden when it's convenient, and I can get more value off of Chain Whirler coming into play. We're running out of gas a little bit, but having this Whirler come down is going to be, going to be fine. Yeah, we're just going to let this happen. Deal my opponent two. Just get the value out of this, this Whirler. And it's also just a great attacker next turn on this board. Commit, play one more thing, come on. Play a Strand Expertise. I think I'm gonna wait on the Chain Whirler. Get in there again. Really want to use this when something, when there's like Something very good to hit with it. That's a pretty good draw. So now if my opponent doesn't block, they're dead. There might be a way I kill them anyways. So upstairs. Upstairs. This comes into play. They go to three, they go to eight, they're, so they're taking five, they're six. Yeah, so let's go. We should have them here. Blossoming defense. I think they're still dead, right? Because five, three. They need a removal spell. If they have a removal spell, then I'm going to be punished not killing this. They only have one more card. I think we're just going to we're going to go for it here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I anticipate my opponent's going to sideboard in such a way where there's less X1s, but I'm not gonna cut my chain wheelers. The on-crop crashers seem poor. This deck probably plays like Sky Sovereign. So my Chandra's might not be great. Um, it definitely probably plays Lara, so the puncturing blows are good. Um, I'm gonna assume the abrades are good because they can kill like servo creatures. And then probably just combating them through the air is pretty good. Kenra might be kind of medium because they have a lot of X1s. I wonder how often you're supposed to board this card out. I kind of want to keep shocking on the draw. But maybe it's too many removal cells. Maybe I don't need all of these. Oh, let me pull these here. Let's see what this looks like. I need another land if I'm bringing these in. Yeah, I can I can do this. Oh no no no! It's too many cards. Too many cards. I thought I cut them all. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Come on, we cut these. I thought I was even. Damn it! God damn it! That's frustrating. That is frustrating. That's why I never like take cards in and out. I usually put them in a line on the side that when my lines might match up, that means I'm at, that means I have 60. I keep this hand. We have three lands. 
So one more land turns on our field has daddy. I love this card so much. I like the legendary borders. What do you think of Hazret? What do you think of Hazret, Philly Boy? Dad, I love Hazret. Hazret is the best. Probably gonna kill that on my main phase. Though I kinda wanna save removal for Fairground Wardens, so. Get a little punished by not having magma sprays. Like, I think magma spray is pretty poor overall, besides being able to kill the Kendra's. I do have to like empty my hand out. So we'll just deal with this now. Don't want to get blossoming defensed. Get that get that one to give me the D. Just a Jade Light Ranger, an Overish Guard. Okay. Gonna save this for something like a boat, probably. Hopefully, we got something to do here. Nice. Yeah, we're just gonna cast it. We don't wanna mess our. Like, if we just wait, we mess our curve up so much. But, you know, it's good on this board. And we can attack next turn, and then, like, this a break can defend us if our opponent's, like, you know, block blossoming defense. Get that two for. Okay. Opponents getting creative. They don't have anything to do their mana. Alright, let's attack first. Then I'm probably gonna just slam a Hazret because if I play Hazret, it's more it's likely to just get like looks like it's likely to get um uh, whatever that card is, the four mana flash O ring. That's likely to happen. And I would rather have that happen because I have two of them. Oh no, I have six through my turn. I got an email come back from my boss and I was looking at it. Oh, that's frustrating. Well, I'm just gonna break this now. Oh, that's so annoying. Blossoming defense, okay. At least we get the blossoming defense out of their hand. So now they only have three mana, so this particular penis isn't going to get eaten. Just get the phoenix down. Look to trade with this. My opponent has three spells in their hand, so... Maybe they're all just like Mox Ambers. Be in way better shape if we had an F6 through our turn. There's a Verderous Gear Hulk. That's a Mox Amber. What are they doing? So at least they're added cards or eternalizing. Okay. So we're just gonna chomp. Chomp right back. They're not added cards, they got one more. Looks like they've sideboarded in such a way where the deck's better against um, Always Yield. Where they're better against the Chain Whirler. So double spelling is probably pretty good here. So let's get in with this Rekindling Phoenix. If I play Hazard this turn, I'm definitely attacking with this, which probably means that I want to play both of these and then hopefully go like land Hazard next turn. Because either way, if I don't draw a land, I can't attack with Hazard next turn. Always yield. 
And then we can double block with our, like I don't mind if my Kenra gets smoked because for this, if, if he like has a trick to dump, to bust through both of my uh, creatures here, like a Blossoming Defense, that's okay. They probably just drew that land. They could start Shepherd Dunes, like, which looks like maybe what they're doing here. Yeah. So we're just going to block this thing. This is the biggest thing on the board. Actually, one, two, three, four, five. I guess I could block this to cut their mana off. Make it so they can't play like Dawnbringer plus whatever it is in the same turn. But my Rekindling Phoenix straight up trades for this. So I'm actually going to block this one. I'm not really going to play around Dawnbringer because we're in like such a position where Dawnbringer is really bad for us regardless. Land so that we can attack with Hazret. Tilt. Alright, now we're just going to play this Hazret out. And are we attacking? I think so. Because <coughs> so we draw land, we can go like ditch this Hazard. Or we don't even need to draw land. We can go ditch Hazard, return Genra, and then or play Kenra and swing out. If we draw land, if they have like an answer to this Hazard, we draw land, we can just play both creatures. When you cast a historic spell, return. So that can't block, which is nice. Get this. Shock you. So they're going to be able to bring back the Rishkar if they cast a historic spell. But like next turn, I can bring back this Kenra out of my graveyard. And they're at two, so they're, de they're dead to a hazard activation. They're dead to a hazard activation and they need to block all my creatures, yeah. I don't know if much saves in there. All right, good second match of the league. How's the chat's day doing? Everybody, everybody having a good start to their, what, Wednesday? Today's Wednesday, right? Yeah, Wednesday morning. I might have to restart Moto. Moto's being a tad slow on me. Do that in between the next round, probably. Uh, ZX Rogue. I don't recognize the name. I would like to play first. Sounds good. We're playing against a Land War Elf deck. We've got. Um... Oh, yeah, it's Squatch Chief. It's got another streeter. Chief mostly got to get my three two. Okay, thirteenth the last evening. Squash Chiefs are really good. Oh, I didn't. get in here we could he could be down two more points of damage here which I would just click through it while I was chatting with him um I think it's a pentad 
Prophetic Prism deck, we're just going to send this shock upstairs. Prophetic Prism, I mean. I think we're just going to go... Just going up. Um, so we're going to get in for four. Play this Chain Whirler. Just be mana efficient. And then we're probably, I would assume they're playing like a Herald of Anguish deck here. Maybe that new Dijin card. make it so I'd rather these have to block than because it cuts off his artifacts in case he's got like some artifact synergy so this probably blocks here my opponent takes six okay I just want to trade that makes sense so now they need two blockers if we draw land then we get to smack in with the hazard so So against an artifact deck, I want my braids, obviously. I think that he's probably got the payoff of like the big flying, um, the big flyers, so I'll take those. Um, Puncturing Blow also deals with the Herald of Anguish. Glorybringer's probably not where I want to be. The shock seem bad. The abrades, the lightning strikes kind of seem bad. I'll bring in the Chandras. The Chandras, like, you know, he's probably got counter spells and such. It's kind of a control deck. So the Chandras might be able to, uh, might be able to do a little bit of work. But also, maybe they're just bad on the draw and I should just keep burn. Yeah, let's try to keep, let's keep the burn in on the draw. Maybe try to do the play. Two cards in hand, don't want your deck. this start off with the soul scar mage we just want to hit lands now we can only phoenix is a decent in this matchup because he's got the two big morons though the herald of anguish matches up pretty well all right that's a good draw so i'm thinking i'm just going to attack and then play another Soul Scar Mage. I don't really want to just Lightning Strike their face. I might Lightning Strike his face next turn because I kind of want to save this Chain Whirler for, for uh, save this Chain Whirler for if my opponent uh, plays like a Maverick Thopterist. Ballista. Yeah, I want to get more value on my Chain Whirler, so I'm actually just going to hit this. They might have like a Wizard or a uh, like a Metallic Rebuke, but we still get in for four points of damage even if they have the Metallic Rebuke. Which looks like they have the metallic review. Okay. At least that's not hitting like a chain whirler. We still get in for four points of damage. Oh, Phil Boy. Phil Boy 
we're playing standard today. What standard, Dad? I don't know what standard is. We're probably just gonna put a counter on this in the main phase. But then it causes me to react first. Then he can just like kill one of my soul scar mages whenever he wants. So I'm just gonna hit this. Oh, we don't have enough mana for the puncturing blow. Um. Actually, so we can go Chain Whirler, get rid of this Walking Ballista, put a counter on this. And then if we draw a land next turn, I can Puncturing Blow this thing. I love how Soul Scar Mage interacts with these like really big creatures. Just gives you chances. So you're probably sitting behind a counter spell. I had to assume. I'm just gonna cast rekindling. I'm gonna cast this rekindling phoenix. Just get this thing into play. I don't want to like. I could like cast Lightning Strike and Earthshaker Kenra, but I think I'm just in such a good shape here if I can get this Phoenix down, because it's just going to deal with this in the air for blanket for, for a lot of the game. All right, the braids that. Then if they tap out here, I can puncture and blow this. Um, I'm going to give him a Prophetic Prism. I don't want him to push any of my stuff. At least now we can get this off the battlefield and kill this. I didn't give him the thing, right? So we'll send one of these at Karn. I'm just going to get Karn off the battlefield, guaranteed. I think they have six, but... And now we have two, even if they play like a big scary... We have a bunch of, uh, we got two removal spells here, so we can deal with that. Let's camera down. Hit my soul scar mage. What is this? Two, four, two, four, six, eight. Here comes the big herald. So I guess we're gonna set this upstairs. You guys should check out his stream. His stream is very good. It's uh, Squaw Chief. Very good streamer. Streams a lot of magic. Plays a lot of modern. Plays Storm quite a bit. Um, it's kind of his main deck. Enjoys playing Death Shadow, but he's primarily a Storm guy. Hand is good, not great. I don't think you can mulligan it though. We've got interaction on the draw, which is nice. I just don't want to get run over here. God, I'm gonna puke if my opponent plays an X3. If they play like a snake here, I'm just gonna throw up. Because then I can't use my turn. I'm gonna spend my turn three killing the snake. Alright. 
great. That's good for the home team. I'll draw Hazard. Give me Hazard. Yeah, same thing. Well, at least we're going to be able to flash our Kenra back. So if this game does go long, we have a plan. Our plan is a 4 4, baby. Jade Light Ranger, Graska. So we didn't bend that, draw land. I think I'm all right just trading this. Well, now I kind of don't want to trade it off. I kind of want to get in there with Bomat Courier. Though I get absolutely throttled by a Bristling Hydra next turn. I really don't want to get wrecked by a Hydra. So I think I'm just going to attack in here and then play the Courier after combat. And then we easily might just like abrade this and then abrade the Hydra with the trigger on and then just attack and ditch hopefully all these lands. Really? Take this. Hydra. Blech. That's just vomit inducing. Well, I might as well get rid of this now. God, those walking blisters was so gross. I was hoping he was going to play a bristling hydra really bad. Draws have not been great. So if my opponent lets me get a card into this Bomat Courier, then I'm just gonna like probably do it. Alright. Ditch all these lands. Alright, that's a good card. I just drew a little bit rough here. We have a pretty good sideboard against this deck, I think. I also think this deck's probably pretty just just pretty good against red. They're sitting on Brass's contempt here, probably. Alright, there's the Hydra. Alright. Let's get our homeboy in here. When in doubt, Hazard's got us. Hazard's got our back. Don't kill my Hazard. They're gonna kill my Hazard. Oh, they're putting a counter on? That's pretty good for the home team. All right, so let's think. I can play, I can attack with Hazret, play Rekindling Phoenix. And then use the Crasher next turn. I think that's the plan. Let's get this Phoenix out here. They can't like, they can't kill me, because this is six, seven, they're one short. They can't like kill me and deal with the Rekindling Phoenix. We win this game. This is gonna be. This is gonna be lucky. I'm gonna block this hazard. I'm gonna block the bristling hydra probably. Because it's gonna trade, and then they can. If they shoot it. They shoot it. The next turn, then they're down in a point. The next turn, we get the oncar crasher. 
assuming they don't put a counter on it pre-combat. Interesting game. I did not think we were going to be in it, though, with how our hand started. So if I do this, if I do this, my opponent If my opponent's got like a Vraska's Contempt, then I'm in a lot of trouble. So what happens if I just take this? If I just take this, they hit me for potentially five, put a counter on eight, I go two. Vraska's Contempt, I can't beat really beat Vraska's Contempt because it gets them up to seven life, eight life. So I think I'm just gonna try to trade here. There's so many cards, but like, Okay, we get that off the battlefield. So he's got to go down on this, I think. So they drew Ditch Jade Light. Okay. What do we got? Put a counter on Ballista. All right. That wasn't good. So. My best play probably is to cast this on Crowd Crasher. My opponent probably. And then go to combat and see what my opponent does. I would assume they're going to shoot it. Because no matter what, it trades anyways. And then it's not attacking. And then if we draw a land, we can bring back the Kenra. So I probably go sh okay, they're gonna be attack. Whoa. And then I probably exert. What do I exert on? If I exert on the ballista, my opponent has to shoot it. And then they can go to one off and not block, but I don't see how they kill me. So what do I exert on? If I exert on the Jade Light Ranger, they just don't take any damage. So I think I want to exert on the Walking Ballista. Because then this has to block here. This probably shoots this. And then, or they can just like not do anything and go to one. Alright, they go three. Oh, I didn't play my land. I have six. Oh. oh, if we draw land next turn, I'm going to be frustrated. Alright, well. Will we draw land? Nope. Not punished. Okay, so against the green decks, I like to bring in the Karizev Expertise. And then everything that kills like an X4. I, like, I really like all these cards, but... I don't really like on crop crasher. Um, Rekindling Phoenix is kind of meh. Lightning Strike's not great. I kind of like sometimes. I don't know if this is like what you're supposed to do with this deck, but sometimes I like just boarding out a lot of creatures and becoming this really weird like. Um, Kari, this really weird Soul Scar Mage like control deck. Probably four Chandras on the draw is a little, a little uh, overzealous. Especially considering like so many of my creatures match up so poorly against Walking Ballista. I'm gonna take Shocks out on the play, but I just want to be able to hit like a Land of War Elf on the draw. I probably can actually do a mix. Well, actually, no, there's nothing else for removal to bring in. So, yeah, we'll keep this. Like, it seems kind of weird, but it's, it seems good to just be a 
kind of just a mono red control deck and just try to shrink all their creatures because they're huge. None of my creatures attack profitably in this matchup, which is annoying. Exerts an ability. I'll show you here. Exerts like an ability that you attack with it and then you exert it. Hey, no, don't eat that. And it doesn't untap next turn. That's kind of what it exerted. It like gets you do something. Like Glorybringer deals four damage to a creature. Um, on crop crash here makes so a creature can't attack, but then it doesn't attack next turn. I think I'm gonna try this. Now I should have another land. If we're gonna, if we're gonna get up to glory bees, I should have another land. I'll cut a shock. We don't really want to see two shocks. Yeah, it's cool. It's kind of like uh, when you think about it, the fade fish. It's like your creature. It's so flavorful because it's like your creature works extra hard, does something, and then it has to take a turn off because it's tired. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Um, Soulscar Mage is one of my best cards in this matchup, but I think I've got a mulligan in this hand. I've got nothing to do on later in the game. It's basically the same hand, but it's got a removal spell, so I'm going to keep it. <coughs> I think we just want action. I'll get some more copy. Oh, Hazard's a really good draw. So this so first goal scar mage, I'm thinking is dead. Oh, nice. Okay, so we're going to kill that. We don't need to accelerate out a turn. It would be nice as a lightning strike because we could have like, attacked. And maybe my opponent would have blocked it. Looks like we're gonna play Hazard on four and attack with it, which is pretty sweet. Let's see, Siphoner. Does he keep the Siphoner or does he bin it? They have two energy, so he probably can keep it. Yep, they did. So they're gonna have one of those next turn. If we draw a two mana spell here. Oh, I guess we're not gonna be able to attack with Hazard. We needed a two mana card. So they're drawing Glintsley Siphoner. Okay, we're gonna take four. Siphoner's gonna be pretty good for them, so let them undo their mulligan. Double Siphoner. So they're gonna be able to draw two cards next turn. So we need a chain game. Real bad off the top. Chain game right there. Nope. Tilt. All right, so I'm going to attack with both of my creatures. My opponent wants to trade. That's totally fine. And play Hazard after combat. Like, oh, I guess they double swamp. If they find out answer this Hazard, I'm likely in a lot of trouble. Kind of cool that they get to see before they decide from the first one. So I have a bunch of decks I'm going to play today. I'm going to play Mono Green Beats. Okay, the Hydra. We really want to draw a Chain Gang. Chain Gang would be great. All right, now we got to pass. We're playing defense. Hopefully my opponent doesn't draw a way to deal with this hazard. Because this hazard brick wall is most of my opponent's attack. Like I can go trade, eat. But if they find a way to deal with this hazard, we're, we're, just, we're super dead. 
but a pretty poor draw. Maybe I was supposed to keep the removal spell. But we need a chain gang there bad. Chain, chain, chain. Gross. At least I can't go like murder to your halt, but they can at least make this thing. This thing huge. Block, 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 take six. Go to two. They eat one of these. All right. This is a blista. I'm in trouble. The blista probably just killed me. You know, just snakes for days. Look at snakes on a plane here. We need chain gang. Chain gang off the top here is just insane. This is an odd attack. Like chain gang just completely rats my opponent's board. Oh, they do, they get so much energy out of it. The attack's good. So they keep one of these around so it can be just counters. Oh, the chain gate doesn't doesn't deal with this. So this this hazard is gonna check this probably for the rest of the game. Chain gang. Oh, and we're dead. Really needed a chain whirler. Chain whirler would have done minus four, minus right? Minus four, minus four on my opponent's board. We made this a 3 3. All right, so on the play, I'm going to cut my shocks and I'm going to bring in more Chandras. And I'll keep one shock in because Chandra kills X fours. And that's what we need. That's what we got to do, chat. We got to kill X fours. I would like to play first. Would like to mulligan. His hand's not great. This is a rough hand. I don't know if I should mulligan a five or not. I don't think so. We have four lands and we have so many like good heavy hitters that I think if we just scry land at the bottom and hope to draw well, we have a chance. And this Kari's have expertise should do some work. It's nice to be able to steal big green dummies. It's really nice when you steal a whatever it is. A uh I can't think. It's really nice when we don't want to land. It's really nice when you steal a Galta with it. I really like how this configuration of this deck, this mono red deck really like overloads the Varasca's Contempts from your opponent. All right. Creature. All right, that's a land, that's not a creature, but it's a spell. No black mana from our opponent so far. It's good for the home team. All right. If my opponent plays a, so we gotta think here. If my opponent plays a black land. Okay, so now we're gonna kill something and we're gonna go up with this Chandra. If they had played a black land, I would have just gone down. Gas. And we can even deal with a bristling Hydra because we can go like down on it, trigger on the stack, um, kill it. And we're just gonna shoot our opponent. It's like Hydra is the scary card here. Yep. So start going down. Let me use this lightning strike because this can hit vehicles. 
Again, they're out of energy. So that's not quite a two for one, but. Then the Shocker is going to take this game over because we've got. They don't have any way to deal with it. Unless they play. They can play a Ballista here, then they have to pop the Ballista. Play Woodland Sedentary, okay. Death Gorger Scavenger. So I'm just going to upgrade this because I'd like to be able to use all of my mana next turn. Between what my draw step and this Chandra, I should have a lot going on. They could have Blossoming Defense. I don't even know if you keep Blossoming Defense in against the mono red decks or not. I just don't, I don't know. All right, Chain Gang, so we gotta play this turn, which is good. We're just gonna run it out there. No value, but we gotta play our creatures. Hey there. Thank you very much there, Rafi, with a sub. What a guy. He finally caught me while I was playing Magic. They just concede. Okay. We'll take it. All right. We're going for the old 4-1. So, hey, how's it going there? Um, God, I completely zoned. Grant, how you doing? How you doing today, sir? So, I'm actually going to start a poll here. I'll let it run for five MTG. Guys, I can play one of either four decks. One of either three decks for my next league. So let me... I gotta play Green Black Snake. Um, mono Green. Or Blue Black Midrange. So I'm gonna set a poll here. Run it for during the last match. Poll. I'm just going to go 600 is 10 minutes, 6,000 is an hour. Run it for 2,000 seconds. Option one. So Yubi, Snake, or Mono Green. Poll cannot be longer than five minutes. Okay, so then I'll just wait. That's annoying. Oh, Top Deck Productions, thank you very much for the host. Everyone come over from there. I appreciate you guys. I guess I might as well run a... Um, run this here. So my name's Dylan Hovey for everybody coming over. Hey, thank you very much for everybody that's coming over. My name's Dylan Hovey. I'm a part of the Card Hoarder Network. Um, they're the best bot chain on Magic Online, so you should check them out. They do great stuff for the community. Um, another great store that I'm affiliated with is Gamer Craze. You should look down. I have their Crystal Commerce listed. They foster a college environment, so they have super cheap, um, buy rates so you should check them out um and you should interact with me my youtube page is linked below and my twitter link is linked below so you should check those out today we're just going to be streaming standard all day i'm going to play four decks it's going to take me a bit of a hot second um to set everything up trample the entails i played against this guy uh this hand's pretty this hand's pretty good we're going to keep it could go wrong, but yeah, this guy plays green red monsters. So the Chandra should be decent unless we get just Regisaur Alpha out of the game. They play green red dinosaurs, yeah. No turn two play is great. Oh, they have a turn two play, that's bad. Alright, so I'm gonna play this now. And then get this guy in next turn. I haven't seen any blue black control. I've seen a I've seen a decent amount of seal away decks. Seal away control decks that are like Esper. 
but I'm pretty sure the mana base and all those decks just seems kind of greedy. I lost to an Esper control deck in match one. I'm fairly certain this is a pretty poor matchup. All of these green decks are just like... All these green decks are tough because they're so big. They're just massive. Death Gorge. So I'll, I'm going to run into a Blossoming Defense if they've got it. Make it so this can't block. But now this is like kind of free. Unless my opponent's got Blasphemy Defense, they can just go like hit E, but like, yeah, it's like that's what's gonna happen. Oh, well that's sweet. That was not as good as I thought that was gonna turn out. I guess I did represent like the shock, so. Yeah, yeah, I've, there's definitely some good some greed there. Okay, so that's a good play for my opponent. I'm going to just go down Chandra negative, probably on this Land of Wilds, actually. That's a really great play for later. Now, do I want to attack? Because next time they can just hit this and then like I have to lose both of my creatures. I think I'm okay chumping with the Bomat Courier with this. Because I have some, I have like card advantage from this Chandra going on. So I'll I'll jump with Bowmat Courier if my opponent gives me the option. They're just gonna gain some life probably. I have another one which is good, but you can't have enough Chandras in this matchup, I think. There's just so many X4s that it's just good to like kill kill things. That Rekindling Phoenix is going to be pretty annoying though. So let's check out our top card. It is just a mountain. <laughs> now I'm in trouble. I probably just attack and then then probably just play a new Chandra and hit this. Yeah, I mean this is gaining my opponent a lot of life. So, this is n not a good part of Chandra. Like, the, w the way we deal with this card is the chain gang. Like, we just use a removal spell, and then we just, like, chain it. Like, that's the best way for us to deal with this thing. Because this card's really annoying. And tough for, this, tough, for, tough for my deck to handle. Outside of that. Really need some hazards. I have a lot of scavengers. Like hazard off the top, and we have a chance, I think. Soul Scar Mage, not as much. I should have waited. Play that after attacking for good mechanics. Just get in our one point of damage here. Alright, so they played around the chain gang. So at least they're cognizant of that. Yeah, that's probably going to seal it. It's going to super seal it. Big Galta, baby. So we do have some good sideboard cards for this deck. We've got Kari's have expertise. Glory bringers are good. And we have puncturing blows, which are good. So let's see if we can claw back in after sideboarding. So, cards we don't want. I don't think we want Earthshaker Kenra. Um, or Kari Zev. 
or Rekindling Phoenix, because like they have so many of those. Uh, those are the dumb cards. What are they called? Um, the Death Court Scavengers. They're just like flush with them. Uh, Shock's not very good on the play. Cards I do am interested in are Chandra, Puncturing Blow, Glory B. Bring these in, and then we just want the removal spells. I just cut one more card because I want one more land. Because I want to bring the Scavenger Grounds. Cut a Crasher. Like, I think that I'm playing against these decks. I don't really know how to beat them consistently. I think the best way to do it is turn to, like, some Soul Scar Mage control deck. But it ain't good, to say the least. Yep, we're going to keep this. A little light on lands, but we've got 22 left in the deck. And this hand's kind of what we want to do. We want to like go curve. We want to curve out. We get to get our bow mat courier on. And then we've got like we can just go if we draw lands, we can just go one, two, three, four, five. All right, land. All right, we're doing it. And it's nice because it looks like this Bowmat Courier is going to get going for us. I love me Bowmat Courier. Hopefully my opponent plays a Land or Elf and a Tap Land. Or doesn't do anything. I'm not just going to play the Chain Gang post-combat. Doesn't get anything out of it, but... It is a 3-3 First Striker, which is going to be good on the board. Opponent's got no plays. It's probably like a Jade Light Ranger. Really want to, we're going to like, really want to land. What is going on there for my opponent? Tilt. Okay, so we're going to attack. And we're just going to pass. Struggle, okay. I'm probably just going to lightning strike my opponent's face. We got plenty of removal. But that's not what we're going to do anymore. We could save it for the um, puncturing blow, but tail. We didn't do it. Deals three damage. We'll play another Bowmat Courier. Registor Alpha would be really annoying. Another Rekindling Phoenix. All right, we need a land. And a land of wealth. Okay, land. Chain Gang's not bad. I think we're going to wait on these Bowmat Couriers for like one more turn. Because all these cards are really good. Okay, so there's the alpha. We get to eat this, which is nice. All right. I really don't want to discard because, like, this puncturing blow deals with this. The problem is, is that my opponent can just like cast a Galta. So maybe I have to like upkeep. So Galta casts class five. So there's like nothing that I can kill that stops my opponent from casting a Galta. So I'm just gonna pass. I should have attacked with my Chain Gang, I think. We just missed our, and like maybe I should have been Bowmat Couriering, but like, I don't know, these cards are like so key in this matchup for me to win. They're like, I've probably gone too late now. Yeah, so the, the, there's one utility land on the board. Yeah, that's that's gonna be that's a problem. He's got haste too. We dead. Chandra's defeat. We dead as a doorknob. So I'm gonna block blossoming defense. Yeah. 
All right, so let's start that poll there. Let me get in here. Um, so we got our we got our pity chats here. So let's get in here. Exclamation point. Poll. Whatever five minutes, five times sixty is, is. We're just gonna go for two hundred UV. Mono G and what's the other deck that I wanted to play? I can't think of it. What was it? And Snake. All right, so let's open up our chest. See what we got. Dungrove Elder, nice. Okay, so now let me at least get, you know, Mono G. All right, let me get start getting my uh, cardhorner.com. Nope, let me get in here with the dashboard. Stop recording.